All right. It's Friday. You got to get it in on a Friday. That's what I was just saying. Yeah. But take a few days. I was just telling you, tomorrow, Saturday, I'm, I'm going to hop in the van and I'm just gone. I don't even know. Early morning? Yeah, maybe. Right on. I can At least I can say that right now. And then sure enough, tomorrow I look at my watch, it's three o'clock. I'm like, hey, what do I even what do I even do? What have I been doing? Yeah. Gotta hit that road. Been going on like a Ontario beach tour, you know? Just checking checking off, checking out these different spots, mostly mm. close by. Yeah, uh, just testing the waters. Well, you you, know? you you mean it in more more than one way. Sure, yeah. That's how you mean it. So you'll be amazed. Even this province, man, you'll be amazed. Yeah, we have a lot of space. This province, this country, you'd be amazed. Uh-huh. A lot of people, they go, most people, at least for, especially for the last couple, last year, I say couple years, it feels like a couple years, but for the last year, it's been a lot of couch time. People lying around, you know, sure. a lot of gaming and, hey, man, everything's got a, a place, got to fit in. I was playing COD today for a video that's about to come out. And did you see me ranting and raving and screaming over there? You had a good time. I was like, man, I don't get any chance to play video. Anyway, it's all right. Because I got the youngsters. I'm trying to show them around. Uh, even in the midst of what a weird year it's been. And so I'm about to hit the road tomorrow. But we got to get it in because we got lots to talk about before I hit any road. Sure. You know? Yeah. You down for that or what? Mm. Nice. All right, let's kick it off with a little bit of Google plus Samsung. Samsung and Google, they've been getting tight. They've been shaking hands. Uh. I don't know what it is. I don't know what got into them. But all of a sudden, after I.O., you saw at I.O., they were like, yeah, you know, we're going to keep doing this Android. Where we're just going to team up with Samsung. They, they had the thing with the ties and operating system. We're just going to team up. Nonchalant. Yeah, that's how they said it. Yeah. You had Sundar up there. And I was like, hmm, that's a bit strange. It's kind of funny that they would... I mean, here you got Google, mega software company, putting together the cleanest Android the way they want it, and kind of uh, separating themselves a little bit. But then they reach out and say, you know what, Samsung? You're Samsung. Mm. You are. And... We want to recognize that, and we think you can help us. And I, I don't, I kind of like these moves because Samsung does some things, and they do some things like nobody else does things. You want to know what they do, like nobody else? What's that? Displays. Yeah. They do displays like nobody else. Mm-hmm. They move units on the smartphone segment, and they're currently really the only player in the foldables. I mean, let's talk for real. I know you're going to say Huawei's over there. I know you're going to say Royale with cheese is in in there. You can't have these ones because as far as I can tell, like legitimate contenders that people are talking about, at least globally, like I'm over here, at least globally. Yeah. It's been Samsung. It's been the Fold stuff. Is there some other device I'm missing? Is my brain on pause? Because you were looking around, you were looking left and right, you're getting shifty over there. Uh, not that I can think of. All right, put you on the spot, it's Will's fault, not mine. They do displays well. Oh, Motorola. Yeah. Look at you. <laughs> Willie Do's all grown up, ladies and gentlemen. Just had to put that one in there. You know what, he was complaining earlier, he said, I got to take care of all these giveaways. You got to give Willie Do a, a round of, of applause right now, because we've been doing a lot of giveaways recently and uh big time like numbers of winners like it's not just one winner it's so many winners and it's people don't i mean not that anybody would understand because it's such a unusual thing to have to do but it's just a lot of leg work it's like it's a leg workout who knew that bringing a one phone from one place to another is just ridiculously expensive, time consuming, expensive. Man, when we did the hundred iPhones yeah. and I saw the shipping bill, I was like, what did I sign up to? Yeah. 
Yeah. It's like I understand the phones. I kind of knew what I was in for. A hundred phones are like a thousand each. Okay, hundred grand. And then I'm like, oh, by the way, you know, Lou, you better factor in another twenty or whatever it was. Yeah. Some ridiculous thing. I'm like, what? To, to move these around? Yeah. Anyway, Will Will Do's been working on that, so uh, you're gonna have to excuse him today. Yeah. If you know, if he gets a little a little bit short, if he gets a little bit curt, <laughs> a little bit, a little bit. Uh, yeah, excuse the language. Just excuse him in advance, no matter what he does. Yeah, everything just that I say or do, just excuse all of that. Just excuse him for once, guys. Sure. Man, you guys need to lighten up on this just guy. Just do that. Will do. You. Give him a chance. <laughs> anyway, they partner with Samsung Display. That's the word here. Google expected to release its first folding phone in collaboration with Samsung Display. Samsung Display looking to expand its ultra-thin glass business by offering a technology to companies other than Samsung Electronics themselves. This is big. Samsung sells displays to other manufacturers, other smartphone companies, but not all their technologies. They hold on to a couple for themselves. Mm. By putting this product out there, imagine all the different makers that might just want to put their hands on that and say, all right, we want to do our version of it. Now, you know, Google in the OS, we've been seeing a little bit, a little tidbit here and there about how they're continuing to embrace foldables and shifting uh flipping and flapping mm. like of, of the os to deal with these different futuristic interfaces and now we're starting to see like okay maybe there's some maybe this is why there's an acceleration in that direction maybe google believes in this thing the folding thing and and let me tell you something if google gets behind it they make a little thing called android uh-huh. <laughs> they do, yes. And so what that means is more native support for cool features that can take advantage of a folding display. Once you get all these engineers on board, they got a few employees. That they got a f- uh, some skilled individuals. And taking nothing away from Samsung, but you get multiple parties and companies working on this transition towards a foldable and all of a sudden, you're going to see some more killer functionality pop up. And then a guy like you puts your hands on it. And you say, aha, yeah. That's why I need this. That's a great collaboration. Look what's going on here. Oh. I mean, that looks impressive. These renders. A couple the of renders, yeah. Pixel fold, I guess. Pixel fold. There it is. Cool. I, oh, now, you, you've been a pixel guy. You left for Samsung right now, huh. but you've been on those Pixels. Yeah, they're solid phones. What do you think? You Great you camera. you you give a folding Pixel a shot? Uh, well, I've always wanted to try a foldable. But, but let's say uh, you got the choice: you got the Pixel foldable or you got the Z Fold Three. I gotta go for the Pixel. Is that right? Uh, their camera quality is really good. Yeah, they do stuff with the software. So anyway, Z Fold Three. Uh, Wait, what are we on? Which Z Fold are we on right now? Two. We're on two. So three. Three is soon, though, right? There were rumors about it. Anyway. Is there? Uh, su- suppose they've been, they've been perfecting this ultra-thin glass UTG technology that better protects flexible screens from breaking from repeating repeated folding action. There's still a lot to be done on the hardware side of things to get to the place we're probably going with this technology. But the more that jump into it, the more companies that samsung makes this equipment available to the greater the likelihood that the thing sticks around a little bit longer Uh, and and then and then it also opens it up to brands you know you heard of these brands like apple apple already buys displays from samsung Uh and they say oh we can just buy that off the shelf they might get to the drawing board themselves i don't know i'm just saying i'm just putting that out there but i'm with you folding pixel i might take a look at it yeah it's quite possible. Today's sponsor is ExpressVPN. ExpressVPN helps me take a look at the things I want to take a look at. Hmm. And that's a key when I'm on the internet. It's uh, something I've gotten used to over the years. In fact, it's something something that I, uh, outside of the show, recommend to a lot of people. They say, how am I going to watch that thing? 
I say, what you're going to get your ExpressVPN going. And he said, excuse me, what did you say? And I said, promo code. And he said, what was that? Actually, I don't know if this one has a promo code. No, you just need to do slash Lou later. That's why I say to them in real life. I say, I want you to go to expressvpn.com slash Lou later. Sort your life out. There you go. What is a VPN? Well, it's going to protect your online endeavors. Uh, going online doesn't have to mean being exposed, whether you're shopping or connecting to public Wi-Fi. Keep your personal information more private and secure. It also means unlocking content from services that have regional restrictions. It's available on all, all the platforms. I'm talking Windows, Mac, Android, iOS, Linux, and you can even install it right on your router so everything connects through this secure connection. There's many different countries to choose from. Of course, when you go, go for a premium VPN like ExpressVPN, you can also expect to get very fast connectivity. So whatever you're doing, all your streaming and stuff is working perfectly fine. 160 locations, 94 countries. Inside the app, you can save your favorites. Protect your experiences online. Protect your identity. Protect your privacy online. And watch the stuff you want to watch on any platform that you happen to use. Other devices, Apple TV, Fire TV, PlayStation, Xbox, Nintendo Switch. It's ExpressVPN. Get your act together. They support the show. You should support them. Head over to expressvpn.com slash later. It's expressvpn.com slash later, and you'll get three extra months free. That's expressvpn.com slash later to learn more or click the link down in the description. Don't forget the slash later for three extra months free. Apple, we just sort of talked about them a little bit. As far as the bending screens are concerned, they're nowhere close on that front. Nor would you really expect them to be. I mean, they may ignore it completely. I mean, they they kind of they've ignored many things, or or happily walked into them later than other companies. Yeah, going about it at their own pace when they feel the thing has been perfected. I guess I don't know. Yeah, they're usually first or they're last with something. I'm looking for these OLED screens in these iPads. Like that's the thing I've been looking for. But anyway. We got some news here, courtesy Mark Gurman, Debbie Wu over on Bloomberg. And they say Apple's next iPad Pro is going to have wireless charging. We're finally going to get that new iPad mini. And the iPad Pro is going to stop being aluminum and start being glass Ooh. all around. As you may expect, considering the fact that uh, in order to add wireless charging, you have to get rid of that aluminum in most cases, almost all cases. Wireless charging on an iPad seems like an odd thing to demand. I don't know how, if it's going to be some sort of a pad. Apparently, they still haven't given up on that air power thing. Mm. I don't know, was that the name of it? Yeah. Apparently, they're still working on it. Got to figure out the heat, mm. Apple Watch, this and that. Like, are you going to have an entire surface that just charges your whole Apple life? Why don't they just sell a desk at this point? Why don't they just Apple desk? The whole thing is wireless chargeable. Apple Workstation. You put your you colorful know. iMac on it. Uh-huh. I don't, they're not All gonna, sorts of colors? They're not going to do it. Okay. Well, we need to stop. They're not going to do it. But the thing One about, the thing about wireless charging is like, okay, so on the phones, you have Qi compatibility. Yep. So it works on any wireless charger. But then Apple eventually makes their own wireless charger, and this is what they come up with. You see how I just keep pulling from my bag of tricks over there? Yeah. You always look at it. If I pull the camera, just no, 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 no. To hey, hey, right hey, hey. No, oh, because it's going to be misinterpreted. Zone. It's going to be misinterpreted. Because yeah. people are going to look and say, hey, that's a big garbage yeah, pile right over there. Right now, it's magic. It's magical. Exactly. When I just pull from over there, like, damn, how did he have access to that so quick? Apple, when they approached a wireless charger themselves, this is what it looked like uh -huh. this little magnetic creature. And so my question is, okay, with the iPad, is it going to be something like this? Will this work? Will it be a, a small little circle, which it's is magnets. actually wirelessly chargeable, and it's a magnet that slaps on, and then that can interface with the, the variety of cases and accessories that exist, and all of a sudden just magnets galore hmm. as far as charging goes. Uh, iPad sales are skyrocketing. iPad has been exceeding expectations. Are they? Yeah, did you know? Can you tell me why, actually? Uh, Go ahead, Will. 
working from home? Will he do? Am I right? Will he do? His name is Will he do. Don't forget it. I don't care what his Twitter handle says, all right? <laughs> I don't care. I don't care if he doesn't have the official Willie Do on Twitter, all right? Oh. As far as I'm concerned, that's Willie Do right there. And yeah. he, he's got all the answers. And he's never messed up, not once, and he's not planning on doing it into the future. Mm. And as he stated, this whole there's been winners and losers with the pandemic thing. iPad has been a winner. For whatever reason, people say, you know what, I'm at home. I'm on the couch. I need to uh, do my work, do my video communication, and I need to watch my content. Uh. And I'll tell you something, man. You sit down on the couch with an iPad. You watch your content. It's a comfy thing. Uh It's a nice experience. And, and, And you justify it because you're like, look, I'm not going back and forth to the office. I'm not spending money on uh, gas and transportation. I need to upgrade this right here. Uh-huh. Didn't you get a rebate from like your insurance company? Did you get one of those? Uh, yeah. I forgot how much though. Well, you know, I don't, you don't have to get into the details. <laughs> no. I wasn't pressing you like Let that. Let me just pull it out right now. No, 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 no. no. Okay. You keep it private. But yeah, the world changed and, and iPad was a beneficiary. A lot of people thought this is this is a, a thing worth buying. In fact, Apple's tablet sales jumped seventy nine percent in the first three months of twenty twenty one. Seventy nine percent. See, I felt like the iPad was getting a bit cold, and then all of a sudden M one comes along, and then all of a sudden pandemic comes along. I guess pandemic then M one, but either way, and they got this. I mean, it's not perfect. This uh, mini LED thing. It's not perfect. But it looks, you know, in the right circumstance, it looks like an improvement in most cases for me. It's crazy powerful. Anyway, they they sold a lot. They're doing really well. And they're going to continue to improve and invest in this because now it represents a larger share of their uh, revenue structure. And the, the main thing uh, or the other big thing here is they also got to improve the iPad mini. If they're going to be invested in this iPad, iPad situation, that thing is dated. So apparently they're going to do that, trim the bezel down, get rid of the home button, get the face unlock going, and at an entry-level price. Have you ever used the iPad mini exclusively? Yeah, man. Got iPad minis all over the place in my house. Oh. My kids had iPad minis for a long time. I mean, from, from the old days. What did they use it for? Well, I mean, in, in the early st- I mean, they don't use it anymore. Right. They have different stuff now. But it would be kids specific apps. It would be like, I don't know, little puzzle games or uh YouTube kids. I don't know if YouTube kids was around back then, but hmm. being kids. Kids okay. on an iPad. Why? What do you what do you got? What do you want to say about um, it? I'm wondering uh if people use the iPad menu for I guess reading. Cause it's more the size of like a paperback? Yeah. Yeah. And also doubles as like, you know. So like iPad OS, yeah, you can browse the internet and stuff yeah. like that. The iPad Mini, it's weird right now because it has like a seven-inch display, right. and you got phones, lots of phones, like six and a half, six point eight inch. So it just feels really weird because mm-hmm. it's not a very big display. It's a lot of bezel you're holding. It's just outdated. However, at the time, it was a nice option next to the full-size iPad because, as you said, it was a little more portable. You could hold it for longer periods without any type of fatigue because of the form factor. And certainly for one-handed use, you could hold it with one hand pretty easily. And typing is actually a little nicer on it because of the condensed keyboard. Thumb typing feels pretty natural. I mean, it sort of feels like a, like a big phone, almost huh. like a Galaxy Fold that I just talked about. Right. Anyway, it's desperately in need of an update, but I like the idea of a slightly small... I mean, I just like options, I guess. I like more products to choose from. Uh, who wouldn't? Uh-huh. But I think one of the one of the reasons it's been neglected is because the uh, you know, iPads in general, like I said, it was kind of slowing down. Pandemic comes along, things explode, and they're like, "Yeah, let's update that. Let's more more models, more features, wireless charging. I don't know, glass. I don't know." One thing I will say: people can be rough with their iPads, like carry it under the arm, slap it into bags, so. 
you have to have the right glass going on. You mm-hmm. go full glass model because you use a big sheet of glass too. Is it heavier too, or no? Well, the glass gonna be heavy too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm. Google's apparently going to follow Apple's lead as far as uh, advertisers are concerned in the tracking stuff. Although, I don't know how... This is a tough one because Google's an advertising company. I'm like, how are you going to... You can't. Can you really follow their lead exactly? Because your entire platform exists to provide people with services that are ad-subsidized. It's your business model. Right. I know you're getting into hardware now. I know you have... Yeah, uh, you can pull profit from elsewhere, but I think like I don't know what it is. Ninety percent of their business is I don't know. I don't even want to put a number on it, but they're doing they do the majority of online advertising and uh profit greatly from it. So a portion of that is getting to know personal information of people so you can better target things. So I think that this mostly applies to the interact like the exchange of your information between parties, sharing with third party. Google already allows Android users to opt out of personal, personalized ads, but software developers may still access the user's advertising ID. That's your unique ID, Will, that says, hey, this is Willie Do uh-huh. right here. And, and these are his activities and interests and so forth. Now, they don't need to share your name. You can opt out, and then they don't have the attachment, but they still have the advertising ID. So they have a profile, so to speak, a unique string of characters. Starting late this year, if a user has opted out of personalized ads, the advertising ID will no longer be available. Mm. So even that string of characters, which could potentially tie back to your interests and behaviors and so forth, it will just pop up now for that third party as a bunch of zeros huh. instead. Um, so will it be as simple as uh, like a dial- dialogue box, you know, opt out or just, you know, I think you got to dive into settings still. Oh, yeah? Yeah, I think so. Let's see. Following the change, if, an, if a user has opted out of personalized ads, the advertising ID, or maybe when you set up your device, company said in a policy update that this rollout will affect apps running on Android 12 devices starting in late 2021 and will expand apps running on devices that support Google Play in early 2022. Okay. So maybe, maybe there will be a prompt. At some point, because this is rolling out into the future, it said it will provide an alternate solution to support essential use cases such as analytics and fraud prevention. So, though, it will depend. Oh, here we go. Google's ad- advertising makes up 80% of Google's revenue. So, I mean, I don't know that you can ever get to the Apple extent considering how core to that. It's kind of interesting, though. I think of Google as an ad company. And they've transitioned to 20% of their business not being related to ads. So actually, I'm mm-hmm. looking at that number and saying. That's not bad. I'm saying you're diversifying over here. Yeah. So you got the hardware. I don't know what else they got going on. Uh, servers and ser- services. Because like Google Drive, we pay for that premium monthly subscription. And there's no ad component there. I'm not getting advertising in there. Although you sometimes you get very angry at Google Drive. Uh, one of the many things that you lose your cool over. Yeah, the little things. But, like I said, guys, take it easy on Will today because it's been a rough one, all right? Apple is mandating that employees get back to the office. Get your butts back here. Uh Uh-oh. Yeah, you've been on vacation too long. That's what Tim said. He never said that. I said that. I said that Tim said that because I was just joking. Tim said... For all that we've been able to achieve, while many of us have been separated, the truth is that there has been something essential missing from this past year. Each other. That's what's been missing. Huh. From the past year. Each other. Really? <laughs> yeah. Don't you remember when you were, when when we we were no longer coming in here? What was your life like at that point? Uh, boring. <laughs> Pretty much boring. It's because like... Did you we, feel like you were missing people? Yeah. Like when we come to work, it's production. Like we actually do stuff. We talk mm-hmm. in person. Humans. And uh, we we don't do like remote stuff. Not really. I mean... We, I mean 
there's things there's things that we do that are part of the job that we do remotely. Sure, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Actually quite a bit. Yeah. But not the core aspect yeah, of it. Yeah, actually like making videos. Core aspect of it. So yeah, that I missed quite a lot. Well, I know you were missing the work, but I'm saying were you missing people? Of course. Did you get to a moment where you're like I'm, yeah. Where are where even, is it? Couldn't even see family. Where are these, where's people? Yeah. You got to a point like that, right? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Well, that's, that's exactly what he's trying to say here. We're missing the essential thing, which, which is each other. Now, obviously things have loosened up a lot in, well, the U.S. and Canada very recently. Other places are, every, every country's in a different situation, but People are maybe less lonely now. People got vaccinated. They're living life to a certain extent. That's what I seem to see. Uh -huh. But still, there was this question about, well, what about the future of work? Is there any need to be in the office for a lot of these types of jobs? Is there a way in which people can just be distributed wherever they want? Like we heard news about Shopify over there. Yeah. And they said, we don't need this office. Uh-huh. And there's many others. I, I I can't. It's not coming to mind right now. But there were a number of huge companies employing a lot of people that said, "Yeah, remote's fine. We'll just do the remote thing." Yeah, a lot of uh, programmers and developers, mostly them, but I'm sure there's many other professions as well that could be working remotely, like annually, right? Absolutely. Video conference calling has narrowed the distance between us, to be sure, but there are things that simply cannot replicate. This is still part of his quote. Can't replicate the closeness, the collaborative environment. Anyway, here's what they're going to do. They're gonna, the new schedule re will require most employees to work in the office on Mondays, Tuesdays, and Thursdays at minimum. Hmm. And some will be asked for four or five days per week, depending on the job. Uh, but there's a new provision that employees have the option to work remotely for two weeks out of the year. What do you think about this setup? Uh, I think people will, uh, be annoyed at first. Really? They don't want to go back there? Don't Apple employees love that spaceship? Sure. But maybe they've been so comfortable working from home maybe it's just like a period of adjustment for the next couple of weeks yeah why do you think and why do you think apple is demanding that they come back because tim cook said so well yeah but what's the incentive for tim what does he misses his pals or uh do you think productivity goes down when people are not physically there or the job is less fun or, yeah. or like what what which element i think you're right like all all of the above but probably productivity Takes a hit eventually. And mental health, I guess, mm. for him to kind of think like, oh, everyone's just working from home. Maybe we should bring everyone together as sort of like a mental ease. You know what? Maybe there's a camaraderie issue too, where yeah. without anybody getting together, the sense of team and yeah. teamwork is tougher. They have those like town square things, right? Oh, they do all that. Town hall. Oh, they do all that. Yeah, all of those. You can do it, they do so, it. So, yeah, maybe they're missing that. Uh, here's a company that definitely does a town hall, town square. Walmart. Walmart is going to be giving away 740,000 smartphones to employees. 740,000. Just get that in your head how many people Walmart's employ. It's obviously more than that, but 740,000 are going to get this free Samsung smartphone. That's a bit misleading because the smartphones being provided for the purpose of work first mm. and foremost they currently walk around a lot of the employees and they have some sort of like a terminal thing for it could be uh, for inventory or something like that it's obviously not as nice as a smartphone but what kind of a smartphone would you give to people in that type of environment that's where samsung comes in because samsung and i know this from experience they've actually put out a number of interesting rugged smartphones in the past. I had some of the active lineup from previous Galaxy devices, mm. which will have this like rubberized thing. You can drop it, increased water resistance, works better with gloves. Anyway, they're still making this stuff. And there's a device here, which I had no clue. It wasn't even on my radar. And actually it was just in your results there. 
Which one? The Samsung Galaxy X Cover Pro is to your left there. This is the device, and it's ruggedized all over the place. Drop it, kick it, dip it. I'm not advising you do those things. It's IP68. And it's meant to get beat up and carried around and live in a work environment. I was like, you know what? I might check this phone out. Kind of cool. I like it as an option. Now, it's listed as a business device, I think. It shows up in there. Uh, business section it has increased touch sensitivity go back to that section there this is a key for individuals who work with gloves could be in uh, shipping facilities and warehouses and uh well obviously certain certain retail so the x cover pro features an intuitive display that lets you interact with your device even with gloves on enabling you to work outside or enjoying the outdoors without any issue i'm talking regular gloves so cool. increased touch sensitivity cool so anyway, they're going to uh, provide, I mean, that's a big order. Imagine your Samsung, you get the order. Oh, you need a million phones? Cool. Yeah, we'll hook you up. Damn. Is there like a sales rep on that? Is there a commission on that? That's a deal right there. Anyway, this is some of the features it will have. It'll have their scheduling in there. It'll have push to talk between employees, signing into work by phone, and voice-activated personal assistant. In the coming months, the company plans to add a feature that will help shorten the time it takes employees to get items from the stock room to the sales floor. So they're going to tweak it. And uh, yeah, more Samsung at Walmart. I was very excited to discover a, a new Samsung device. I don't think, I mean, it's not like a spec champion or anything like that. No. It's mostly about the rugged aspect. Yeah. So we have a confirmation that that Tesla Model S Plaid did break the quarter mile, mile record. The confirmation came from Jay Leno, who was speaking freely on a podcast. And they didn't discover it till recently. Someone was looking around. They're like, I think Jay Leno was on that podcast. They listened through the whole thing. And they're like, oh, wow. He talked about that moment because he had been, uh, what was the, the site was Drive Tesla Canada that had spotted his presence or at least posted about it when this new Model S Plaid was over there at the track. And they were like, again, it was completely speculative, but they said it's breaking records over there. Right. And but Jay he, Leno was there. He wasn't driving. No, no, he, record, not, right? not the record one. Right. No, no. Okay. But anyway, he goes on this podcast called Spike's Car Radio. And is there a quote? Oh, yeah, he says this. I'll tell you what I did. I went up to Famoso Dragway in Bakersfield and the Tesla Plaid, dot, 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 I drove by, and the NHRA guy was there to make it official. It turned a 9.247 at 152 miles per hour. That's a quarter mile time, 9.247. That's fast, Will. Uh -huh. Don't you remember? We were talking the other day about Fast and the Furious. They, all they needed was a 10-second car, and those things had to be souped up to the gills. Uh-huh. All they needed was a Tesla. Who That's knew, all. Right? That's all they needed was a Plaid, and they could. All they had to do was go talk to Jay Leno. Yeah. So how come Tesla didn't really like announce it? Announce it. I don't know. Like what made this a big deal. I think probably because they're so backed up with this car, they're uh, so delayed that it's like you don't really want to make a. Like, this car is so good. You can't get it. And everyone's like, "Yeah, I know. I ordered. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I ordered it." And they're like, uh, Tesla. Like, the car's bad. Jeez. Don't worry. The car's bad. Never mind. Yeah. Um, so Tesla had said, though, that, that you could expect to achieve numbers in this neighborhood. They said that the top speed is 200 miles an hour and a zero to 60 should be 1.99 seconds. That will give you a quarter mile in 9.23 at 155. So obviously that's optimal conditions. And you like to see what it can do in the real world which is what Jay Leno was talking about, but that's awful close to the, you hear my clicks there? That's awful close to the advertised time that could have been expected. Huh. Jay Leno confirms it, so of course it makes news. Anyway, it's in Spike's car radio, and it's at the 13 minute 50 mark, if you're curious to hear Jay say it in his own words, but this is going to be a fast car, period. Huh. Um, congrats, I guess. Definitely, Tesla. definitely, definitely congrats. No doubt, no. but they but they got to deliver the thing because mm -hmm. otherwise it doesn't really matter, does it? No, you got to deliver. Uh, how about this for an alternative? I mean, we talk about Tesla, Tesla, 
and and pretty much every other ev manufacturer that's out there they've been putting the batteries down in the floor of the car low center of gravity uh skateboard style design is what they call it you just plop the car on top of it all the weight all the batteries are down on the floor you also get a frunk gives you a you get a frunk yeah. um now does it always have to be that way you hear you have uh, a group imagining an alternative saying that there are some downsides to having the batteries down in the floor for one the driving position the headroom the type of designs that you can do because you're inhibited by this one component having to be down there and so this in, and also range and so this group what do they go by page roberts is a london-based startup claims it can improve ev range by 30 percent with this unconventional design now what they did here is they put the batteries in between the front and back seats and mounted vertically and so it looks like the rear seats face backwards the front seats obviously face frontwards and the batteries they sit in between those two so right. the, the backs of the seats are up against it i don't know does this give you tremendously more room it doesn't look like it but i'm sure they did the math on whatever greater capabilities they have here they're not competing with other items uh, down there in the floor region um there are some downsides i can imagine one of the things people touted with the electric cars is that having that low center of gravity really makes the car feel planted right like for handling and whatnot so if you get the weight up higher maybe there's less of that although i imagine just based on this article that the group that designed it was imagining it in a more maybe in a, in a less sporty car maybe in a more mass production a uh, people mover uh. type of scenario yeah the design isn't for any ev it works best with small electric cars more specifically sleek and sporty four seat vehicles okay because of the design's low height and short wheelbase so i guess they feel like they could get the roof line a little bit lower because you're not competing with so much material on the floor uh -huh. because i don't know about you but if you ever travel past like a a model y or a model x it's yeah it's a tall boy you know it's a sailboat there it is speaking of sailboats remember we were talking about that ridiculous 28 million dollar rolls royce yeah dude i uh found more appreciation after watching that clip i saw the whole construction video of the boat tail super cool yeah you went so, you went into it yeah nice it's, uh yeah you don't really appreciate it until you actually like hear what the design it's all because it's so deep inside the details yes you know it's so granular when you really pay attention you look at it from a mile away without the microscope and it's like okay it's a car but then you get up close and they're like you see this chiseled component yeah it took 10 years exactly only the finest materials and only one craftsman that's capable of producing unicorn hair yeah whatever it is yeah. Anyway, it's really impressive. he got this rumor, or I guess it's a report. It's a report via the Rob report, and they know about rich people things. They claimed that that boat tail that we had seen, the 19-foot Rolls-Royce, record-breaking new car, as far as value is concerned, the number that was speculated, $28 million. They believe that this is Jay Z going to Jay-Z and Beyonce. Is it one of them? One out of the three? But the but this one specifically, because they're not all going to be the same. Uh. And the reason being, well, there's a couple of reasons, but there's uh, bottles in the back, uh, champagne, Armand de Brenac, which apparently Jay-Z is a co-owner of this company. So that was one giveaway when you saw the type of bottles of champagne in the back. I'm going to keep going with the giveaways here. here. Uh, if you're prepared for that well uh, go ahead the, by the way the report was originally from the uk's daily telegraph okay um i want to get this right oh there were also pre-existing reports that the owner was in america and that he and his wife we're involved in the music business. So that's the level of detail you got there. Okay, that's fine. That works for Jay-Z as well. Uh. Uh, next, they talk about the color, which is 
an azure blue finish, which they believe could be some sort of indicator because they got the their first child is named Blue, blue Ivy. Ivy. So they think that could be some sort of connection. And then, of course, the champagne cooler with the brand that Jay-Z partially owns. And then on top of that, Rolls-Royce refuses to say who purchased it, but I feel like we're going to find out eventually anyway. But anyway, but they said, here's their quote, in broad terms, Rolls-Royce coach build clients are significant individuals. I mean, it doesn't tell you much. Willie, do as far as I'm concerned, you're a significant individual, right? Yeah, you but want I one can't these? afford a boat. Too, yes, so I, I, I think you can finance it. Sure, <laughs> yeah. Uh, here we, here we, this continues. They are collectors, patrons of the arts, and men and women who have commissioned some highly celebrated architecture. This is them saying who it is without saying who it is. Uh-huh. Their ambition is to create a permanent statement, something profound that moves beyond the normal constraints. Listen to these words right now. Tell me you don't want that. Anyway, they say that recently Jay-Z became rap's first billionaire. So that would right. help with the $28 million price tag. It doesn't sound to me like they have irrefutable evidence, but anyway, it's a report. You tell me what you think. You think if you think it's Jay-Z's uh-huh. boat tail or not. Dude, what are you going to do uh, with the champagne if you own a boat tail? Well, you Will got, you drink it? No, you, you, I mean, you just leave it, right? It's part of the collector's yeah, item. Yeah. Okay. You won't drink it and just leave the bottle? Well, you know what? Actually, if I got the 28 mil, then... There's two. For sure I'm drinking. If I got the 28 mil to easily put on it, uh, I can replace the bottle. That's what the bottles look like. Unless you, you're telling me it's like numbered and it's some somehow... Oh, I thought this was just limited to the car. No, I don't believe so. No? You can look it up. If you want to get to the bottom of it, you want to go full detective. Look up Armand de Bren- Brenac, which is B... Or Brignac, B-R-I-G-N-A-C. That doesn't sound French when I say it like that. So, yeah. If you you look it up, look at Google Images. I think the bottle looks like that. All right. Yeah. I think it's the one on the far right there, that like platinum looking one. No, no, no in in the picture that you had, but oh, like yeah, I one. I think it's that one, right? Uh. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. So you just whatever, drink it and then pop, pop a new one in oh, there. Okay. I mean, you got to be drinking champagne all day. You got lots to celebrate. You got this vehicle. Yeah. Just pull up and then uh, I know set up the umbrella. Yeah, you're obsessed with this, like yourself having a picnic in the south of France. That's gonna happen for you one day. <laughs> Italy. Or whatever. The countryside. It's the same <laughs> yeah, thing. Right. It's the same thing, man. Yeah. I'm t- I'm telling you, it's the same thing. But a lot of people don't know. Uh, like there's a you know moving between those countries there's like a middle zone there uh, where you got people who speak italian you got people who speak i'm taking talking to french riviera over there right it's gotta get my boat tail first i went there a couple of times i was over there in uh nice and Cannes, where the film festival is oh okay it's insane what do you mean I mean, it's so nice oh, okay. it's, an under, it's, a, it's a ridiculous place that's how how nice and uh-huh. beautiful it is that region but yeah, you drive along there, you can find yourself in Italy. Mm. So I'm just saying, maybe your trip, maybe you can do both. Yeah, I'll ride that line. You can go south of France and then you get yourself into Italy and you do all of it. This next story might be my favorite of the whole bunch today. And I know people sent it to me and somehow it didn't register how cool it was. <laughs> and then I'm reading a little bit more and I'm like, oh my God, we got to talk about this. This is, this is, this is, I love this. Mm. I, I got, you know, A history with this. United Airlines is buying 15 supersonic aircraft from Boom Supersonic. Depending on safety tests, United may increase its order to 50 supersonic jets. Look at that thing right there. Uh. You're not not happy. Okay, listen. (laughs) It's about damn time. You got military jets that can bring you, get you across the world super quick. And by the way, I just need to get this out of the way. Yes, if you travel fast... You burn a lot of fuel. This company has an eco plan to solve that. All right. So stop with that for now. But it's been roughly the same speed you travel across the world. And we got people trying to go to space. I'm looking at you, Elon. I'm looking at you, Jeff. And 
can we just like can we just improve the jets first okay maybe the jets maybe through improving the jets we get better tech for space anyway i don't know maybe not right but we had this this existed there was a jet called the concord which i'm familiar with i was obsessed with for a while when i was a kid my because you wanted one my uh my no no told me once that having traveled on it i don't know where he went maybe it was to london i can't remember but spoke of a of a an experience of speed that at the time i think was exclusive as far as commercial travel was concerned now it went out of commission they couldn't make it work it's pretty rugged on the inside not all that luxurious i mean it kind of looks like a military plane on the inside but it was fast and it was fast all the way back then and then we were like nah we can't be doing these supersonic things it doesn't work the business model doesn't work but do me a favor and go to the wikipedia for the concord i just want to check the speed on it because i think this new one is even faster but of course we can check Mach 2.04 was the speed, which is around 1,354 miles per hour or 2,180 kilometers per hour. So this is the Concorde seating for 92 to 128 passengers. This was all the way back in 1969. This new jet that United is apparently purchasing 15 of. Uh, the speed here is Mach 1.7. So not quite as fast as the Concorde, but very close and a lot more luxurious on the inside, as you're oh. going to see as you, uh, as you scroll here. So, uh, you know, okay, scroll a little bit more to the interior cabin picture. Like, you could fly there, Will. Come on, man. You could sit there. Uh, yes. And what if I was to tell you that you, because you're a big... Uh, you're a big Japan guy. Uh. Actually, they don't have the Japan timing in here, but we can we can figure it out based on these other flight times. New York to London is typically seven hours. You do that in three and a half. So it cuts it in half. Los Angeles to Sydney is a 15-hour trip. Try six hours and 45 minutes. Tokyo is what, 10 or 11 from here? Uh, no. Come on, man. It's Come uh, on, Will. Yeah, I don't remember. Oh. Too late. I got it. 16. Uh, Narita Airport. Oh, no, no. Wait a sec. That's with a stopover. You did a stopover. I did a stopover. Yeah, yeah. So in we need Chicago. To, we, we, yeah, yeah. No, we, we, there must be a direct, no? Uh, is there no direct flight? No one's doing that? Go to Air Canada to uh, Narita. Toronto, Tokyo direct. Oh, yeah. Here we go. 12 hours nonstop. Air Canada. Oh, okay. 12 hours 55. Okay. So, you go, you you do that in six. Sitting here. You do that in six. You're sitting there, and it's direct. It's a direct flight, mm -hmm. and you happen to be on the fastest moving commercial jet, and you feel really cool about it. Oh, I forgot to tell you, it's going to cost you a few dollars. They did not release pricing, uh. but speculation is going to be a five thousand dollar minimum. Oh, okay. But I mean, you you kind of thought that, didn't you? Yeah. This is like premium airfare. Unbelievable stuff. Um, this gets me excited. I know I'm, I'm a weirdo. They got a cool promo video. So are you, do you feel the mock? Oh, I the, feel, the oh, I, oh, I feel the mock. <laughs> All the mocks? I feel many mocks. Is there like a, like a speed thing with your body or no? So, oh, you got to turn on the music probably. I don't know. I'm assuming you got to turn on music. Yeah, check out the promo video. They did like a music video. Like, don't you want this jet? Um, I believe you would feel it. I mean, since it's a commercial aircraft, I presume they're going to ease into it, Will. Uh. Like, I don't think they're going to hit you with the mock all right away. I don't think it's mock two straight up. Yeah, everyone passes out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> too many Gs. Yeah. yeah, I think they would be gradual with it. But I think once you're at cruising, I don't believe you would feel a difference. Uh. You're flying at 60,000 feet, by the way. That's another thing you're capable of doing. 60,000, am I right about this? I believe that's what I read. Yeah, 60,000 feet. 60,000 feet. Anyway, these are expected to be rolled out in 2025, fly them in 2026, and then carry passengers in 2029. Sweet. This is still a little ways off, but I find this to be quite exciting, this stuff.
71 feet long. Uh, oh, the full scale XB1 is 71 feet long. Full production model hopes to have how many passengers did it say? Uh, oh, by the way, Japan Airlines, one of the one of the companies interested and invested. Same with Virgin Group. So cool. maybe uh, after all, uh, Branson's going to be interested in these. I was just I thought I saw how many people it can carry. Maybe not. It wasn't a ton, as you would expect, because it isn't a huge jet. One of those photos looks wild when you go scroll down to the one where it's like coming out of the hangar. It just looks like an absolute rocket, which is fun as far as I'm yeah, concerned. Yeah, really cool. Like, it's so pointy. Man. Poke your eye out. It's like, look at this. Um, I'm just looking for the passenger. 88 passengers is what it will carry. So obviously uh, you got to be spread out to have the accommodations that you saw in there. Yeah. But uh, what my Nono had told me about the Concorde was it was no frills, man. Inside of it, it was nothing fancy. And he did speak about getting knocked around a little bit, but that was a different client. It was a different era. Well, he needed to go somewhere fast, right? That's all it needed to do. Actually, I don't even think that's what it was about. I think at oh. the time, he it was more like a... It was almost like how people are doing the space tourism now. It was kind of a thing of like, ooh, you flew on a Concorde? Damn. Uh, like it was a thing. I mean, he did go to Europe or whatever. Like he, it was, but it was also kind of a an experience if you had the money for it. Right. And uh, I guess he did. But anyway, this thing's out of commission. But now with this uh, boom... This boom company, boom supersonic, it's happening again. A little bit differently, but happening again. I got to tell you, man, once this thing comes, like on the space one, I'm a little, eh. Like the space tourism that just goes up and comes back down for like, I don't know, what whatever price they're saying, half a million dollars or something. Uh. I'm not saying eh in, this, in the sense that I'm just trying to return on like the actual experience. Yeah. It would be, it would actually be kind of amazing to say. You like the needle airplane. It would, no, it would be cool to go to space. It would be cool to go to space and see from up there, but it's over very fast, the experience, as far as I can tell, right? Yeah. Isn't it? A couple, like an hour, maybe? Okay, and, and it's just so expensive right now. Yes. And people are lining up. They're like, I don't care. I'm doing it. And they're paying these, these crazy amounts of money. This If this is actually five grand... And you can travel across the world and end up in... Where would you go? Your first flight. I have no idea. Okay. I'm assuming it's going to be very limited choices. Yeah. I'm assuming it's going to be... I mean, the examples they gave, like London probably would be one. And Sydney, they mentioned. Uh, I don't think it's going to... There's not, not enough jets to go everywhere with this. They, they, their initial order is 15. Uh -huh. So it probably would be London or something like that. Oh. Anyway, I got all, I got very excited about that one. You did. It's also called Boom Supersonic. Okay, Bitcoin. Yes, Bitcoin update. Elon did like a broken heart plus a Bitcoin logo. Uh-huh. And, uh, and a meme. Uh, and then Bitcoin was down a little bit. Is Bitcoin, I don't know, is it still down? What's going on? Let's get to the bottom of it, Will. That's what we do. It's down a little bit. Down a little bit, yeah. Maybe five percent. Yeah, well, whatever. It's been night. it's been down. And people still very upset with Elon. Anyway, he keeps tweeting about it. And uh and people keep trying to interpret what he means. So he did the broken heart emoji alongside the token, and people are like, okay, is it over? What's going on? And then this kind of coincided with the 2021 Bitcoin conference, which is going on. In Miami right now, This year, actually. I was going to be the star in the is that mine? campaign. Holy and I was cow. This close. Very loud. Oh, Screaming at me over here. Yeah, it's happening right now? Yes. In Miami. A lot of uh, notable people there. Many notables? Uh, I heard uh, Mayweather is going to do a talk there. Well, he's in Miami anyway, yeah, right? Exactly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. 
But uh, might as well double up. Ron Paul, Michael Saylor. Okay. A uh, few others. Uh, Tony Hawk will be there. You're in this crypto thing. You know that. <laughs> well, I was looking at the lineup for speakers. Yeah, but you're still like, watching crypto content, aren't you? Here and there. You not are. that much. Yeah, you are, though. No, no. <laughs> well, Elon always brings it back, you know, with the tweets. I'm back. just like, okay, what's going to happen with the market now that he's tweeted? Right. And then it goes all over again with the videos. And... Seemed like it's stressing you out, Will. Huh? Hey, well, you're not the only one because he's been the number one target of this Bitcoin conference. He's been blamed. For price drops, as you're well aware. Yeah. And uh, there was even to open the thing, there was a chant. Max Kaiser, host of the Kaiser Report, began his fireside chat at the conference by repeating, uh, I'm not going to say the word actually, but uh, the, the number one expletive and then Elon's name several times. Mm. And it was a chant. Wow. And everyone was joining in. And there's also been... These uh, this advertising, these kind of billboards around Miami. Stick to space, Elon. Sponsored by Bitcoin is dot Bitcoin is. Yeah. Bitcoin is dot com. Learn more about Bitcoin. Stick to space, Elon. I don't know if you can find those uh, billboards. They're in the article if you want to show people. But he's enemy number one as far as crypto is concerned. Here we have Scott Melker from uh, also tweeted Elon Musk versus Bitcoin 2021 in Miami. Like he's a big target over there. And I don't know, man, it seems like it seems like a really weird set of occurrences that he has become this villain now in this community, which you would have presumed or at least just like moments before would have been number one fans. Like, I, like I, I feel like there's a lot of Teslas at this event, uh -huh. but maybe less than there would have been otherwise. So. Yeah, I feel like a lot of people were, quote unquote, betrayed by him. Betrayal. As being like thorough supporters of Tesla. Yeah. And SpaceX and all that stuff. But that, be, that, that stings, that betrayal one. Yeah. Because then. Internet betrayal. Because then it's like, it's tough to fix it. Uh -huh. like, what do you have to do to fix it? I don't even know he wants to fix it. Look, he's still goofing around. But yeah. anyway, he's the number one enemy at this Bitcoin convention. Mm -hmm. This is a cool one, Will. You ever wonder why it is that an animal like a salamander can lose an arm or an organ and then just regrow it? Can they? You didn't know that? No. That's right. Oh. There's some species that they're just like, oh, my arm got, I lost my arm. I'll just grow it. I'll grow another one. Yeah. It's incredible stuff. Very cool. And what scientists are trying to do now is figure out what allows those species to do that and stops us from doing the same. So you have some animals, mammals, like ourselves. Yeah. We get an injury, lose a limb, whatever. We have scar tissue, scarring that occurs. And of course, that scarring is going to shut down any opportunity for anything to regrow in that location. Yeah, we can't do what the salamanders do. Those salamanders, do. they don't scar. They just get to work regrowing the lost limb. A team of scientists led by James Goodwin, PhD, of the MDI Biological Laboratory in Maine has come a step closer to unraveling the mystery with the discovery of differences in molecular signaling that promote regeneration in the axolotl, that's the type of salamander they're looking at, a highly regenerative salamander while blocking it in the adult mouse, which is a mammal with limited regenerative ability. So they're playing with mice as the mammalian substitute in order to determine these differences and see if they can amp up the molecular signaling in the mammal to behave in a similar fashion. Uh, instead of regenerating lost or injured body parts, mammals typically form a scar on the site of the injury. The scar creates a physical barrier to regeneration. Our research shows that humans have untapped potential for regeneration. If we can solve the problem of scar formation, we may be able to unlock our latent regenerative potential. Axolotls don't scar 
which is what allows regeneration to take place. But once a scar is formed, it's game over in terms of regeneration. If we could prevent scarring in humans, we could enhance quality of life for so many people. Wow. So they feel that through, well, maybe eventually through some sort of external uh, intervention that they could stimulate a similar scenario to what the salamander experiences. And you could regenerate. And by the way, for this salamander, it's not just limbs. Talk about organs. Like imagine mm -hmm. people who have issues with, I don't know, kidneys or heart or it's crazy. Uh -huh. Now I was reading this other part in here about human infants. Human infants can regenerate heart tissue and children can regenerate fingertips. I didn't even know that. Really? It's likely that adult mammals retain the genetic code for regeneration, raising the prospect that pharmaceutical therapies could be developed to encourage humans to regenerate tissue and organs lost to disease or injury. Human infants can regenerate heart tissue. I didn't know that. And children can regenerate fingertips. I didn't know that. So we lost the, like we... Like you and I lost the regenerative uh, feature speak in for our your, body. Speak for yourself. Well. <laughs> uh, well, you got hair, so you're regenerating hair. So mm. there's that. Um, but this is a weird, uh, weird analogy with scar tissue. It's like the fact that you, like, we need to cancel scar tissue in order to regenerate. Yeah, and scar tissue probably like it obviously serves a purpose. Yes. So, therefore, you're going to have to be monitored and you're going to need some other type of therapy in order to compensate for the fact that your body isn't scarring and they're trying to stop the scar from happening while simultaneously trying to encourage this other behavior similar to the salamander. So, yeah. I mean, this is fringe stuff, but I found it to be quite interesting. Yeah, what if it doesn't stop? What if you grow, like, more arms? I don't think that's in the genetic code, though. That's the thing. You're supposed to have it's late. two. Like in your DNA. Guys. It's latent in your code. Yeah. My dude. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if you saw this one, but there was um, a chicken McNugget, which was shaped like the characters in Among Us, and it recently sold on eBay for around $100,000 because it looked so much like those little characters in Among Us, you know, with the two legs and the visor. Yeah, the astronauts. Uh, the crazy part was, you know how I was talking about the BTS meal, which came with the nuggets? Uh -huh. This nugget was pulled from one of the limited edition meals as well. Uh. If that means anything to you. <laughs> well, this is interesting because this is obviously not a normal shaped nugget. There are normal shaped nuggets. Like you have the boot, you have the circle, you have, uh. The other shapes. I don't know what they are, but they're. I didn't even know that. What, what you shapes. just said, I didn't even know that. Yeah. Like, you know, uh, when you look at a McNugget, it's a very specific, distinct shape. I don't even look at them. Yeah. There's I only ate, like four shapes. I ate the BTS meal the other day. I didn't even look at them. <laughs> they were gone. Yeah. So this is uh, such a weird anomaly because it's like formed into those shapes to make it like dippable. It's all, it's all a big science thing. A single McDonald's McNugget that appears to resemble a character from a popular video game Among Us has become a very hot item on eBay. Bidding has reached 100, nearly 100000 since the auction opened May 28th. Uh, the seller explains that it is an authentic McNugget found inside a McDonald's BTS meal. Uh, the, since it's a food product, which has an... Average expiration of about 14 days. It will be delivered prior to expiration. So it's going to be like frozen, sealed up for shipping. Uh. And uh, one of the things that boosted the auction was the fact that the actual Among Us game Twitter handle tweeted it out. Oh, uh, they made it official. They made they. They were the ones that said, there's a $34,000 Among Us chicken nugget on sale. I don't know how to feel about it, but also I want it. Okay. Boot, bone, ball, and bell. Yeah. I never noticed this. <laughs> I mean, they're not that different, to be fair. Yes. But they made it just different enough where there's 
Like it's it's. Oh my God! Distinct. Look at the next click over there. I'm telling you. No, 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 no. Oh, the one, one, the one with the chart. Fans' favorite chicken McNugget shapes. The boot wins. <laughs> 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 Why aren't they all boots then? Thirty six percent prefer the boot, and only seven percent like the ball. Because they want to make it like distinct enough where it's a variety. So yeah, 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 yeah. You know? they're not all the so same. It doesn't look as genetically modified. But but in reality, it's just like a different mold. Yes. Of the same stuff rolling off the assembly line. Yeah. Anyway, who who do you think wants the hundred thousand dollar nugget though? A uh, big fan. Of Among Us. And big nuggets. So they're gonna just. But how do you display it? Because it has to stay frozen so it doesn't... Oh, uh, yeah. You're right. Um, it's well, kinda... in this sealed bag. Yeah, I mean, but come on. What you can do with that? Uh, you can pour a plexiglass over Wouldn't it, Wouldn't that right? be against the rules, though, as a collectible like that? I don't know. I don't know either. I don't know the rules on this, but that's a $100,000 nugget right there. Sure. Um, okay, well, before you scroll down... On this next article, I want to ask you, it's trivia time. Are you ready? Uh. How long ago did dinosaurs ro roam the earth? Mm. I mean, I'm not asking for any sp a specific date. Yeah. Just roughly speaking. A million years ago? <laughs> I'm way off, aren't I? How confident are you in that answer? Not very confident, to be honest. 10 million? Between 66 and 230 million years ago. Oh, yeah. But you want to know something? What, what period? Researchers, researchers polled 2,000 adults and discovered that 4 in 10 think that they existed between 2,000 and 10,000 years ago. Oh. It's, isn't it crazy how... Like, we all know about dinosaurs. Dinosaurs are amazing. Yeah. We all love dinosaurs, but we really don't know that much no. about them. We just look at it and we're like, well, that's cool. That I was mean, a long time ago. And then after a certain point, we're just like, I don't know. It was a long time ago. Yeah. They had feathers recently discovered. They were birds. Yeah. There's also other kinds of findings in here. I mean, the headline of the article is nearly half of Americans think dinosaurs still roam the earth. <laughs> what? What kind of dinosaurs? In some remote corner of the world. That's what, uh, but that's, isn't that a Jurassic Park problem? People saw Jurassic Park. They're like, yeah, that seems possible. Uh, yeah. 54% also believe that dinosaurs only lived in Africa and North America, unaware of the fact that their bones have been found all over the world. More than 1,000 different species of dinosaur. The typical adult can name just four, with the Tyrannosaurus rex being the most recognizable. Can you name more than four dinosaurs? Uh, Velociraptor. Okay. That's a big second. Triceratops, Pterodactyl, Stegosaurus, Brontosaurus. Let's go. Uh, that's all I know, I think. You win. You win, Well, You I only like had to hit four. When I was young. Same. Dude, I have one of my favorite Christmas gifts I ever got when I was a youngster was the dinosaur book. That's all I wanted. Yeah. Just a, just a, like a, one of those um, kind of like a directory of dinosaurs. Oh, okay. You just scroll through and it's, it's like has all the specs. Uh. I, I think one of the few video clips of myself as a youngster was walking around my grandparents' house just gloating about my dinosaur book. I got the dinosaur book. <laughs> Di Look at my dinosaur book. Yeah. So. There's a, a lot to be learned with dinosaurs. Apparently. You and people, people need to do uh, some more research, obviously. Six in ten people agreed there was once a dinosaur called the Do You Think a... Do you think the Saurus? Do you think they Saurus? <laughs> Six in ten people agreed. Really? <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Anyway, this research is promoting a new series coming out June 1st, a preschool animated series called Dino Ranch on Disney Junior. Right? Is that what they're going to do? Yeah, to celebrate National Dinosaur Day. 
Dino Ranch. Dino Ranch. So I guess you want to learn about dinosaurs, or get or or have your youngsters answer these questions better than, uh, the majority of people. <laughs> <laughs> then they can just load up on the dino ranch. Nearly half of Americans think dinosaurs still were on the earth. Wow. Uh. Anyway, I think your million was pretty good, by, by the way. Even though it was a lot more than that, at least you were at the million mark. Sure, yeah. I think that was pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, this next one, very mysterious. Uh. People on the internet are speculating that this may be evidence of time travel right here. Oh. Uh. A painting from 1860 that appears to show an iPhone. <laughs> do, do you see the iPhone, Will? Uh, yes. It's, uh, she's holding it and apparently texting. Looks like it. Yeah. Obviously, it's not an iPhone, Will. Obviously, uh, this is not evidence of any kind of time travel. However, it's fun to... It's a fun thing to imagine and to look at. <laughs> look at this guy. <laughs> I mean, it's a weird painting. He he obviously is interested in her, and he's going to give her the flower, right? He's Hiding in the shadows. She must be... This probably like a prayer book or something. Yeah, that's what I think. Yeah, because they would carry something like that back then. It's not the first time that a photo or an image like this has convinced people of time travel. There's another one, which actually I don't think is as good if you scroll down. I think this one actually started it. This is from 1629, or no, 1670. Uh. And the dude there is apparently, people thought he was holding an iPhone. Every so often these stories pop up. What do you think about this painting in general, though? Look at uh. look look who's at the door there. <laughs> oh. <laughs> wow. This is it's, cool, uh, man. Man, paintings are cool. It's very surreal. Look at this painting. Yeah. Look at the spot that the woman is sitting in. Uh-huh. There was nothing else around. Is she just sitting there all day? Like, for how long? Does she have a puppy on her lap? Yeah, it looks like it. And then another dog in the foreground. And the, yeah, the other person has just come through that door. And there's a river out front. I don't know where, where are they? Oh, because they're in the Netherlands? Are they? I don't know. I'm just seeing the, the water waterway out front. Uh. Canal or something. Well, it's definitely not a phone. It's not illuminated. Anyway, someone brought this particular painting up to tim cook and they said they said do you know when the iphone was invented and he was like i think so and then they're like no you're <laughs> you <think so? laughs> uh let me check check back on you on that <laughs> and no because they showed him this painting and he's like i don't know what i don't know anything anymore <laughs> and he's like because oh, obviously the guys he was playing along when they were goofing he was visiting a part of the world and they had their this artwork and he was playing along well Oh, okay. And he said, I don't know, maybe that was... The... Anyway. Yeah. No, there's no time travel. I know I know. Uh, everybody wants to imagine such a yeah. thing, but... Uh, well, maybe. Maybe one day. Yeah. Figure that out. Oh, here's a weird one. I kind of like this one. I've been getting a little more tennis news since I clicked on the... What is Naomi... Osaka. Osaka. I clicked on... When she, yeah. she bailed out on a tournament, and it was a top trending story and i was curious about it and then now so my feed getting a little bit more tennis related stuff uh -huh. and one thing that has always struck me about the tennis situation is the relationship between the athlete and the judge have you ever witnessed any of this stuff uh, How, they have like a weird dynamic they're always they? they're always you i'm guessing any sport you're irritated with the ref but this is a different, it's only one guy. There's not multiple refs to be mad at. And it's super intimate. Like, it's quiet. You know how quiet it is at the tennis match? Uh -huh. Compared to, I don't know, team sports. It's kind of like golf, a little bit louder than golf. So there's been really high-profile blow-ups and, and arguments. I think Serena Williams, there was a couple of clips a while ago. Anyway, this is a kind of a nothing argument, but I love it. So you can go ahead and play. Can you play it? Play a little bit of it. And I'll explain what the what the dispute was about. So this was a second round match. And the guy in the white shirt there. Okay, pause it. Pause it here. He's talking to the to the judge right now. And the judge is saying, I don't want your bag there. 
And he's saying, my bag is always here. And apparently, by the way, a lot of tennis players are very superstitious about the placement of their items. Huh. And the, the judge is saying, no, that bag is too close to the line of the court. And he's saying, well, it's not my fault you guys put the benches so close because normally the benches are further back. Play, play a little bit more of it. Because it's pretty close to the tram line. And creatures of habit. But you can tell he's irritated here. And he says, I'm not moving it. And he basically just says, no. And the judge can't do it. <laughs> Doesn't do anything about it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it is crazy how close the chairs are at times. <laughs> the commentary. Yeah. This, I, maybe I saw a movie. I'm trying to think of a movie I saw. Was, it a, was there a Wes Anderson movie with tennis in it? I think so. Anyway, it's just, it's a funny, there's something so intimate and they're mic'd up. Like you hear it all so well, uh -huh. whatever their dialogue happens to be. And uh, it's not overboard, not but, overly dramatic. And it's also interesting that he can just not do it. He's like, no, you should move the benches back then. Yeah. And it's in the public because in other sports, if you go at the ref like that, like, no, I'm not going to do it. That's not an option. Uh -huh. It's a penalty or whatever. But here, they, they just stop talking about it and the game goes on. To the tram line. And players are creatures of habit. He said, no, I can't move it. Yeah, I mean, it is crazy how close the chairs are at times. And everybody's watching. Yeah. It's great. I got to go to one of these tennis events. Looks, I, I, I got to have this experience at one time. Listening to the drama? I don't know. There's just something about it. It's a whole, it's its own uh, thing. What was the outcome uh, with? Nothing. He, he, he left. Oh, I don't know what happened in the game. Oh. But he left it there. So whatever the outcome was, wasn't impacted by the presence of the thing because he got to keep it where he likes uh, it, the bag. Yeah. Uh, he gets into weird things on the internet. The next one is even better. And this one, I didn't even give you the link because I didn't want to spoil the surprise. Have you okay. been following the recent AMC situation with the... <laughs> I didn't read it, but... You didn't read the link? <laughs> no. I have, just searched Have you it. been following the AMC situation? Like uh, the stock price is it go? Yeah, yeah, I think I had AMC stock when it was like around eight bucks or something. Uh -huh. I don't, I don't, I don't have it now. I got rid of it at some point along the way, but it's been as high as like fifty bucks, right? Uh, sixty nine, I believe. Wow. Yeah, <laughs> it was high like a couple of days ago. So and now it's around forty. Okay. Anyway, whatever. It's become the meme stock. I, like, I guess GameStop is still there, but yeah. people are having fun with AMC. You get the Wall Street bets and everything. And the CEO of AMC has been doing interviews, and kind of, you know, they 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 got this fan base that they're trying to take advantage of, rightfully so, as you would. And so recently, he's doing an interview with a prominent YouTuber, and he sits down for the interview. And it turns out he's got to, he's got, just click the link. Click the link. Click, click the link, Will. You want me to read it? Read the headline. Uh, AMC's CEO <laughs> appeared to be petless during a YouTube interview. Oh. He goes to do the interview without pants. <laughs> and then you wouldn't, okay, so you wouldn't know it because he's from the waist up. And I know we've all done this. I love this, by the way. But he's got a dress shirt and a tie, and he's doing the interview. Yeah, it's like an upshot, slightly upshot. Okay, so no problems. And it's very professional. He's talking about the fundamentals. He's saying AMC's for real. We got money. Like he he referenced a couple of reasons why uh, it's worth somewhere between twenty and twenty five per share is what he say. Uh, what what he AMC's finances uh, two hundred thirty nine million in cash it received from Mudrick Capital to five hundred million in ounce on Thursday raised by selling eleven point five million shares. Like he was talking about 
real business stuff saying you guys are with the right squad right now. But then the, <laughs> the camera falls down. At one point during the interview. <laughs> <laughs> and, oh, boy. And it shows his bare legs where the dress shirt ends. And you can't tell. I mean, there's no, there, there's probably underwear there, but there's no shorts or anything. Uh, his tie is hanging the right tie, in between. The tie goes into the crotch area, and it's a lot of thigh. And I'm sitting here thinking, isn't this perfect for the meme stock that the CEO, who they call the silverback because they're all apes or whatever it is. Yeah. They call he's this the guy. Alpha. He's the silverback and he does an interview without pants. Isn't that just perfect? Yes. Yeah, that's great. But the thing is, now my mind is all screwed up because I'm like, it is perfect, but... During the interview, it was a camera falling, but was it a camera falling? I mean, how hard is it to put pants on? <laughs> Not very hard. What do you mean, though? Like, the camera just, no, it no. was all staged? I didn't say that. I'm just saying <laughs> I can't help but be like, isn't it perfect that the meme stock with the silver back doing YouTube interviews from his house gets a headline like this? AMC CEO pantsless during interview it's just perfect like i have filmed videos pantsless before and i don't have a <laughs> clip online like that like mr meme stock i don't know there's something i just love about it there's something that seems too good to be true and even the expression of the interviewer <laughs> <laughs> is uh his face uh, it's very it's, good. Anyway, yeah, I don't know. We'll see what it does for AMC stock. If it, uh, <laughs> I would assume that the Reddit crowd, the Wall Street bets, I would assume that they love this. That's yeah. my guess. Yeah. I feel like I want to buy more AMC now because the guy's doing interviews pantsless, but he's living up to the name. But I'm a weirdo, so I can't speak for everyone. Uh, but AMC makes sense right now only because. People are getting back out there. They want to go to the movies. I mean, I see it. I get it. I don't know if it's a 50. I don't think it's a $50 share, but anyway. Yeah. CEO don't need pants. Uh-huh. Uh, Will Do has a wild card today, and I don't know what it is. Do you I don't? know what it is? Did we clear this? I don't even remember. Now I'm blanking because the AMC pantsless guy has me all flustered over here. Well, when you gave me the stories, I was asking you... Uh if you heard about this uh, invisible art. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Did you read yes. about it? Yes. I saw, okay, so I saw this. Uh, get ready to be blown away, ladies and gentlemen. Willie Do Wildcard is back. Here you go. Okay, so speaking of Italy, uh, there's an artist who sold an invisible sculptor for $18,000. And once you see the sculptor... But wait, why does the headline say 23500 I believe this is like Canadian. Oh. Or uh, Australian. Australian, from, okay. From the site. Oh, okay. Like, uh, I got you. US 18000 Got so it. So I picked this Yahoo Finance site specifically because it has some pretty awesome quotes about it. So he was talking about uh, explaining the actual sculpture, but... Essentially, the sculpture is right in the middle of this park area in Italy, and it's literally just taped off, and it's like a five-foot square that's taped off, and there's nothing there. Mm. And he calls it the Buddha in, in contemplation. contemplation. Yeah. And uh, he made this little video about it explaining where it is. You do not see it, but it exists. It is made of air and spirit. <laughs> it's not even like aerial drone shots. It's just him <laughs> shooting. Activate the power of imagination, a power that anyone has, even those who don't think they have it. What a weird production as well. Yeah, it's black and white. I think he has a gimbal at least. At least or the stabilization on the camera is pretty good. And he's just, yeah, he just walks away. It's one of the weird 
artsy. But I don't understand how do you buy just like wow. How do you buy it though, Will? Because it's taped off like in a public street or something. Yeah, the it's kind of a you just get a certificate. Yeah, there's like a certificate of authenticity. <laughs> and uh I mean, does it have any information about the buyer? No. No. So there's no information, but um people asked them about or asked this artist about, you know, what what it is and there's some just weird quotes rather than invisible sculptures, I would Define them as immaterial sculptures, my fantasy. Train for a lifetime to feel differently. The existing around me allows me to see what apparently does not exist. <laughs> uh, let's see. The vacuum is nothing more than a space full of energy. And even if we empty it, there is nothing left. According to the Heisenberg uncertainty principle. That nothing has a weight. He said, therefore, it has energy that is condensed and transformed into particles that is into us. That's it. <laughs> it's just crazy. I, I don't know. Like this, is this like the new form of NFT or something? I'm just really confused. Well, you can't keep doing it. That's the thing. Yeah. Like you can't sell the invisible sculpture multiple times. Uh, he can't come back with Invisible Sculpture 2, can he? I don't think so. No, I think... Look at the top want. comment on this Instagram post. I have the same sculpture in my home. <laughs> <laughs> it's just crazy how an artist can do this and actually be certified and someone will actually buy it for a lot of money. How do you? How do we know... How do we know that he didn't buy it? He could have. He could have. Like, or a relative or something, and then tremendous notoriety. Yeah, like I this, mean, we're talking about it. Yeah, right? 18,000, and you get the story goes around the world, the invisible sculpture. Uh, who buys it? You can't, you don't get anything, Will. Yeah. For Will, someone, it's invisible. <laughs> yes, it is. There's nothing transacted. <laughs> yeah. You only get a certificate. This actually makes NFTs make sense. Sure, yeah. You got something. It, it has pixels. Well, you got something. You're, you got this. Uh, you're on the blockchain, at least. Mm -hmm. ain't, no, ain't no blockchain over here. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I'm going to go finish my invisible sculpture right, right here. I think I have a better idea than doing this show. <laughs>